Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Pretty cool video today for you guys about an alcohol stove. Alcohol stoves are efficient, convenient, compact. We love to use them for backpacking and hiking. Had lots of videos on the channel about that. They're also good for emergency situations or off-grid type situations. You can obviously boil water with them for dehydrated meals. You can even cook with them to some extent, but can you bake with them? Last two, three weeks, I've been experimenting quite a bit on trying to bake with this Trangia Spirit Burner. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you guys how I figured out how to do it. Thanks for watching. One of my favorite companies here in America is Firebox Stove. They put out a lot of really innovative and interesting products, not just stoves. Now I have the Gen 2 Nano, I also have the Gen 2 5 inch, uh, firebox stove. Both of them are great wood stoves. Now they also put out a baking kit that goes along with a zebra pot. Now I have both the 14 and 16 centimeter zebra pot, but I usually use the 14 centimeter. I went ahead and bought the baking kit for that. This baking kit was $35. I'll show you guys here in a second everything that came with it. Now there was a lot of problems with getting this to work just right when I'm using an alcohol stove. It's designed to use with a wood stove and it also comes with a little piece you'll see that goes on top where you can put coals on top of your billy can so that gives you heat from the top and from the bottom allowing more even baking. But we had to come up with ways around that because we want to use an alcohol stove. First let me show you guys what I put together to bake with the alcohol stove. First of all of course is the alcohol stove itself. This is a Trangia Spirit Burner. Okay, It has a top that has a simmer ring so you can adjust the flame and of course it has a top here where you can actually store the alcohol in there it has an o-ring so it makes it watertight second i'm using the firebox nano now this particular one is the uh, one in the x case but all you need is the actual firebox itself you don't need any of the extras except for the two nano sticks that are here on the side you just open it up like that and you get these nano sticks you slide them through and what that does is it gives you a perfect spot to slide your Trangia and it fits right there and it puts it that perfect one inch away from the bottom of the pot. Now, this is the baking kit that I bought from Firebox Stove. Okay, this is a baking sheet, okay, basically that fits inside of the billy can. I'll show you all that. This is for a loaf of bread, a little loaf of bread. Very nice, simple holder so you can grab these things and move them around, okay. This is just a little grate that can go underneath to hold this up, you can put it underneath and it holds it, okay? Nice pair of tongs that can help you when it's hot and stuff like that. And then this is that specialized piece that I told you guys about. This is the 14 centimeter pot. You just pop this underneath here and you put it right on top. And you're al this allows you to put some coals right on top of this, which gives you heat on top. But like I said, we don't wanna do that. We wanna just use the alcohol stove from the bottom. I wanna be able to bake something indoors in an off-grid situation. Now I did need two additional things and I'll show you guys what it is. A piece of carbon felt, and this is some Reflectix that I covered with some uh, aluminum tape, and I'll show you guys exactly why here in a second. So let's talk about some of the difficulties I had before I show you guys what I came up with. First of all is controlling the heat on the bottom of the pot, okay? If you get too much heat, you're gonna end up burning the bottom of whatever you're cooking, not allow the top to fully cook, okay? So it's really about learning your simmer ring. I'll show you guys the settings that I fell upon that I thought worked best for me, but I would encourage you to you know, mess around with it, play with it, see what works best for you. You can get a thermostat. Firebox sells a thermostat you can put in here. It'll tell you the temperature of the inside of the oven, all that stuff. I didn't go that route. I just figured that I'd go ahead and try to wing it, and it worked pretty well. The most important part of not burning the bottom is to be patient. It's going to take longer to cook your actual food, so you want to just have a lower burn at the bottom, real low flame that allows things not to burn. That gives you the best results, in my opinion. So the way this works is you have your Firebox Nano, and you're basically going to put this on top of it. It's gonna create heat underneath it, and that heat's gonna circulate to some extent inside of here. Now the problem is, is that a lot of this heat can escape out of the top, and it's hard to keep it in. So I did a couple of iterations over the last couple weeks to figure things out. First of all, I just baked it. I just baked it with nothing on top, and all I got was a burnt bottom of the biscuit with a raw top of the biscuit. Did not work. Then I decided maybe I will make some kind of a reflective cap. So I made this Reflectix cap, the original one was much longer. It went down to the bottom. I figured, well, the longer you know, the, the sides will be, the more heat it will retain. Well, a couple of things happened. As you can see, I've got several holes. I've already cut this down, but I've got several holes because even on a low simmer setting, that flame comes around the sides, comes around the back, and comes around this way. 
and eventually will eat away the Reflectix. Smells terrible and just wasn't effective, so just the Reflectix by itself didn't work. Next, I figured, well, I need something flame proof that I can put on top that may create a little bit of uh, heat retention. So I just got some carbon felt and I put it on top. Well, it obviously didn't burn, but it did not create enough heat. It just didn't work from the standpoint of bringing the heat up and allowing it to cycle through. It would just go off off the top, even through the carbon felt. So the last thing I decided on well, what worked is a layer of carbon felt, just like that. And then I made a new cap, okay, that goes right over the top, just like that. Sometimes I may still get a little burning on the back, but I'm just gonna watch it for now. I it completely in aluminum tape, that way it has a little bit better chance of standing up to the heat. So this is usually pretty straight up and down, okay? You can see that I cut, that gives me a, a mark as to where it goes. So I cut a little area out there. When I put this on top, that's my index, okay? I put it right there and you can see that on both sides, there's a little bit of carbon felt on the side, okay, there and over here that overlaps so that flame can hit the carbon felt and not hit the Reflectix that keeps this from burning up. The last thing that I did was a little bit more practical. Whenever it's getting heated, obviously the bottom of this pot is super hot. So every 10 minutes, what I do is I just rotate this pot and then I just put this back on top, okay? That creates this top area is where all that heat is concentrated. This is stainless steel. It gets really hot, guys, right on top of this. So that retained heat on top really makes a difference. And I think that's really what helps the most in getting that browning on top. And just every 10 minutes I rotate it. It's a little bit of a pain, but the best results are that way. The biscuits we're gonna make are about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, so maybe one or two turns of the pot itself. But if you're having something longer, just flip it over every 10 minutes. I think it'll make a huge difference. So let's bake some biscuits. I'll show you guys how well it works. All right, so to give you guys an idea how this works, okay? This goes on top just like this, okay? When you open this up, okay, this pops out. Now you put this tray down at the bottom here. I'm just gonna move this back a little bit. Put that tray on the bottom. And then this, the long ways goes this way. It pops right in, okay? Put the top on and clamp it up. Once you clamp it, okay, this is the Firebox Zebra Pot, which has these little clips on here so that it stays closed. So we're gonna take this out. First thing you wanna do is preheat your pot, okay? So we're gonna turn this on. All right, so I turned it on. This is about the position, okay, that I want you to use your simmer ring, okay? Put the simmer ring with the actual um, controller side or whatever it's called, I don't know, on over here, okay? That's gonna allow you to control your flame pretty good. Now, you wanna put this on here to preheat, okay? And I would set a timer for about five minutes. You're gonna wanna let this get, get nice and hot. Now watch it because sometimes your flame can go off when you're using the simmering, so just keep an eye on it. You can go ahead and put on your top because you can start to retain some heat in there, okay? and just watch it carefully. Until you're sure how this flame is gonna spread out around, I would keep a really close eye on it, okay? I can see the flame is going well. I shouldn't have any problems up here, so let's let it preheat for about five minutes, and then we'll put stuff in. Let's get the biscuits ready. All right, so here's your pan. We're just gonna get our biscuits, okay? Really simple, okay? Just gonna grab some biscuits. We're gonna put four in here. So that's four biscuits, okay, just like that, ready to go in once we're preheated. I want y'all to get a good look at how low the flame is. That's all you want, just a little bit of flame. You can see how it's starting to creep up the sides and that's what would affect the sides of my Reflectix at the top. But if you keep it this low, okay, it's been about three, four minutes. We're gonna put our stuff here in about a minute. If you keep it this low, you'll be just fine as far as not burning the bottom, but cooking everything good. All right, so it's been about five minutes. This is what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take these top things off. They can be warm, so just grab them, okay? take them off because we're gonna flip this over. Now, right now, you can grab the side like this, okay? Pop this open, all right? And then just take it off. You wanna just kinda of ring this up. Be careful, because once it gets hot, what we'll do is just flip it around like that. Gonna put our stuff in. Now, at this very beginning, make sure that everything's um, balanced good so you don't have anything falling or going crazy. All right, let me move this so y'all can see it a little bit better. There we go. Now you just pop in the bottom first. It's a little fiddly, but you'll get used to it. Just hold it in place, pop it on, okay? Once you have it on, and then you're gonna put on top, 
both pieces, your carbon felt and your little hood like that, okay? I'm gonna start my timer for 10 minutes and I'll show you guys what it looks like after 10 minutes inside. While that first 10 minutes is going, I'll show you guys quickly. This is Reflectix, okay? Basically, it's you can buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot. You can also buy the um, solar screens for your car that you put on your car windshield. It's basically the same stuff. This is what I made the little hood out of. You can see that it's got bubbles on the inside. So I use this uh, brand of um, aluminum tape, okay? There's two types of aluminum tape. This one is the one that I prefer to use because one of them has a very thick layer of glue on the back. This one you can see is just metal on the back. That's the kind you wanna use. If you're curious at all how well this system works, I think it works really well. First of all, obviously there is no heat directly on this. And if you touch this, it is warm. Now maybe we'll be able to see there's some steam. I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's steam coming up through this carbon felt. It really, really, really holds that heat in and makes a big difference. This little setup is the key as to why you can bake with just an alcohol stove underneath. It's been 10 minutes now, so we will pop this off. So open that, release this top, and then it'll slide right off, okay? There's what it looks like so far, rising a little bit, okay? Now the best way that I've found to do this is just to grab both of these, okay? Rotate around. It's a little bit fiddly, you get used to it. Pop this up, okay? Put this in. Just gotta grab it from this side, make sure it's safe. Pop it on. All right, now the hot part is up top here. Put on your carbon felt. Put this on. One more minutes. Let's see what happens. So we've got 10 minutes. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna pop it to the other side here. Sorry if, if I get in y'all's way, but I'm just doing the best I can here. Okay, we'll get this out and show y'all real quick. They're not ready yet, but they're definitely getting there. Okay, we're gonna go another probably five minutes, maybe even another 10 minutes. So let's put this back on. We're gonna do the flip again. There we go, flip them around, pop it on. When you pop it on, again, make sure that you're still good on top. Put on your top with your hood. This hood is hot, guys. I mean, it is warm. It's not gonna burn me, but it's warm. Let's go another 10 minutes. All right, that should do it. Let's see what we got here. That has been 30 minutes. And they look pretty good to me. So here are the biscuits. You may not be able to tell, but they're, they're not um, they're not raw by any means. Let me see if I can get one of these off. So they're cooked very well on the bottom. Okay, not burn at all. Cooked all the way through, as you can see. Okay, really, really well cooked. Can't argue with that. Could you get them a little browner on top? You could, and you could probably cook these even longer. As you can see, the way that we have this set up, it does not burn the bottom of the biscuit. It doesn't burn the bottom of the biscuit. Okay, it's perfect. So you could cook it another probably five minutes and you get a little bit more golden brown on top if you wanted to. But these things are cooked perfectly and look really good. There you go, biscuits with just an alcohol stove. I think it's pretty cool. Now why do this? Why was I dead set on trying to get this done? Well, the truth is when you're in an off-grid situation or even on the trail, let's just talk about the trail versus home, whatever it might be. Boiling water to rehydrate dehydrated meals can get kind of monotonous. And sometimes you wanna have the opportunity to make different things. And with this setup, you can bake bread, you can make cookies. I've made both cookies and biscuits with this setup and it works very, very well. Obviously this kit is designed to use a wood, wood burning stove and putting those coals on top. But sometimes you want a more controlled environment. Uh, it could be a situation where it's pouring rain outside, you wanna be able to use it inside. And I figured, can I get the alcohol stove to work? And with the modifications that I made, it definitely worked without a problem. There's plenty of ways to bake off the grid. You can get a solar oven. Of course, you're reliant on the sun being out at that time. You can bake inside of a charcoal grill or something like that. Although sometimes you get that flavor that doesn't really work well with cookies or with bread, but you can do it. Of course, there's plenty of other products, but I like this particular setup for two reasons. First of all, I think it's relatively affordable. You can get a stainless steel. Now I have the titanium nano, but you can get a stainless steel nano. Uh, with the X case and all that kit for about $70, $75. The baking kit's about $35. It gives you everything you need. If you need to make the uh, the top, you know, get a little bit of carbon felt, uh, you can pick that up at Lowe's or Home Depot and then just getting the Reflectix and making yourself a little cap like that. If you don't use that Reflectix in the cap, it will not work 
nearly as well, and you're gonna really have raw biscuits or cookies on top. You can use this for off-grid situations. You could use this for car camping. You could use this on the trail if you wanna carry all this stuff with you, especially if you have like a base camp and you hike smaller distances through the day, whatever it might be. How awesome is it to come back, just bring a little bit of flour, a little bit of water, maybe a pre-made mix, uh, some biscuits, some cookies, whatever it might be, and you can easily cook them in this setup. Now on the Firebox stove uh, website, or the YouTube channel, I should say, they did use an alcohol stove to bake a chicken. And I think in this particular case, if you would use this system where you rotate it and you use that top cap, you probably get even more browning on top of the chicken and maybe even cook faster. With the simmer ring in place, you get a lot of use out of this Trangia. I cooked this thing for 30 minutes. I put in probably a third of the way up on the Trangia itself, and I use it for 30 minutes, no problem with the simmering on. I like to store my Trangia with no fuel in it under normal circumstances, so as soon as I'm done, I popped off that simmering, and it probably burnt for about another four or five minutes full blast before running out, but definitely works. If you store some fuel in your preps or whatever it might be, a couple of gallons will go a long way, guys. You can really use the Trangia for a long time with a pretty limited amount of fuel. It's also very easy to find this fuel. You can use heat, which is available at almost every Walmart or a grocery store, a service station, whatever it might be. Really easy to find, really easy to store, and really easy to use. So I'm pretty excited at two things. First of all, that I got this to work. It took me, like I said, several tries, probably six or seven individual times trying to bake something before it actually worked, before I felt like I could actually make a video about it and say this worked. I went through three iterations of the top cap before I came to this particular one. It worked perfect, there's no singeing on the side of it. My system of having the uh, carbon felt on the side overlapping just a little bit, that Reflectix worked perfect, no damage whatsoever, should last long term. Definitely looking forward to trying out other things in cooking this way, I'm looking at possibly uh, modifying my Trangia to allow an alcohol feed so that it can burn longer and longer. That's one thing I'm gonna be looking at doing. So if you guys have any ideas or links to videos, please put it down below. Also, while you're at it, if you have anything you wanna see me try to cook on this setup, let me know, I'll try it, because it's always fun to do some cooking. And this particular uh, way of cooking is great because I can do it inside, no big deal. I would be interested, and one of these days I might even time it. I have a video on my channel as far as how long a Trangia will run or burn on a full tank of gas, right? I wonder how long it would burn using the simmer ring. I mean, it's, I would guess, well over an hour you'd get it, which is a pretty long time. If you run out of fuel, you just have to watch it, let it cool off just a little bit, and you can refill it very safely as long as there's no spark and light it right back up. Next thing I'm gonna try is baking a loaf of bread. I think that's gonna be more challenging because I'm gonna to have to let it rise a little bit and then bake it, and it's gonna to have to bake for a pretty long time. I would bet probably close to an hour. And rotating it every 10, 15 minutes is gonna be a little bit of a chore. I might change it to every 15 minutes if I'm planning an hour-long bake for a loaf of bread. But stay tuned for that because it's gonna be awesome. As always, guys, a couple of things. First of all, there's links down below to all this gear. Make sure you check it out, supportfireboxstove.com. I am not affiliated, not sponsored, just simply a very happy customer, and I think they do an awesome job creating innovative products for those of us who like to get out in the woods and experiment more with cooking. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below, guys. Our channels grow by getting thumbs up, comments, likes, all those things. So if you can give me a like down below, that will help spread this across YouTube, help the channel grow. If you like the video in particular and you wanna see more content like this, make sure you mash that subscribe button. Really helps out, guys. And lastly, if you really wanna know when I'm gonna put out my next video, hit the ding dong bell and you'll be the first one to know. As always, guys, I really appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. I hope y'all like these types of videos or the kind of things that I love to do. I'm gonna go watch a NASCAR race and edit some videos. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and week ahead. Stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.